Thank you. There you go. I'm glad to see so many of you here from the Tiki party last night. Uh, I almost didn't make it as well. Uh, <laughs> Sad but true. Uh, so yeah, my name is Mark Bates. We're here to talk about uh, rapid web development with Go. Uh, I won't be nearly as funny as Matt and Matt. Look at they're leaving already. <laughs> oh, I can under I completely understand. If anybody else didn't know this was me, you can absolutely leave. Oh my God! And I was just about to compliment you. These are my friends, according to my mother's paychecks. So those of you who saw, uh, saw their talk uh, just a few minutes ago uh, know that this is actually how I look in real life. Um, but this is how I look as a gopher. Um, that is my custom Ashley McNamara gopher down there in the corner. Uh, what I love about this is nobody else has this gopher. It is impossible. That guitar is unique to me. Um, the hair, the shirt, everything else you can get on Gopher Eyes Me. But that's mine, just for me. Uh, so, who am I, for those of you who don't know, which I assume is almost everybody except for the people in the front row here, and you. Um, <laughs> like I said, my name is Mark Bates. You can find me on the Twitters, the GitHubs, the Slack, as Mark Bates. Uh, I run a company called Gopher Guides, which does customizable training. Uh, so if you have training needs, come find us. Uh, I also run GoBuffalo.io, which is what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to talk about the what and the why and the, what did I say, and the buffalo? Oh, and the demo. The what, the why, and the demo. Um, this is an interesting project, and I think this project has a re can have a real impact on the Go community. A really positive impact, I think. And I'm not just blowing smoke because I'm amazing, and Ashley made this beautiful logo here, as she talked about. Um, so let's talk about web development and Go, and why I think Buffalo is what we need to not only be able to do better, make faster websites, uh, or make websites faster, um, but also to grow the community and to make the community stronger and better. Who has heard this phrase before? <laughs> right? Literally everybody. I see this on Reddit and Twitter and Slack. Like, I'm looking to build a web app. What do I do? Just use a standard library. Um, which is, I, th I think, just awful advice. That's the equivalent of saying RTFM. Right? Just go use the standard library. How do you not know this? But I've never written Go before. But it's in the standard library. Uh, and by the way, the standard library is amazing and one of the best standard libraries we have uh, I've ever seen. So I'm not downplaying the standard library. Um, but talking about the, the way that new people come to Go and what they see and what their first reactions to the Go community are. And unfortunately, a lot of people's first reactions it's, is this very elitist kind of, we're better than you, we don't need your stinking frameworks, we don't need your Rails, your Symphony, your Django, whatever, right? We roll our own. Who's heard that phrase before? Just roll your own. <laughs> That's fun, because I want to ship an app this weekend. I'll just roll my own rails. That's got to be easy. The standard library is essentially a collection of building blocks. That's really what it's meant for. I think Steve said the other day, it's meant for library authors, not really for end users, right? Like, it's meant for the people in this room to build really cool packages so that those new people coming in can do something even simpler and even more amazing. Uh, this, by the way, is the world's largest Lego sculpture ever made. It is a life-size, life-size, as if they really exist, X-Wing fighter. <laughs> uh, and it's in California. And if you've ever seen the movie Brick The Brickumentary uh, on Lego, who's seen that? Nobody? Oh my god, it's amazing! Uh, they talk about the building of this thing and how they shipped it and manufactured it and constructed it. it it's awesome. Uh, and this is me and my oldest son a few years ago. Uh, he was very excited. Not as excited as me. <laughs> but he was kind of excited. I really had to pay him to do that. Uh, so look, every language, getting back to standard library, every language has a standard library. Some are better than others, and Go is definitely one of the best. Um, but why would you want to build a web app using just a standard library? Let's take Ruby, for example, right? Ruby has a standard library. Ruby has web app stuff in the standard library. Has anybody here ever built a web app using just the Ruby standard library? I didn't think so. Has anybody here ever built a web app using just the Java standard library? The .NET standard library? No, C? <laughs> <laughs> Right? You're kind of seeing where I'm going with this. We are like the only language who touts this way of building complex web applications. Just use the standard library. 
Um, it's great. It really is. But why would you want to do that? Why would you want to sit there and spend all that time rolling your own? There are reasons. I'm not going to say there aren't reasons. There are plenty of reasons to just use the standard library. Um, you know, Matt talked earlier about building GoFries being in five hours. It's got how many endpoints? Two? Two or three? Yeah, right? It's a tiny little app, right? You don't need, yeah, you don't need a Rails to build Gopherize Me. But you know what you do need something like that for? It's to build a giant web application, a business. <laughs> you can't roll your own and get that to market anytime soon. Uh, and for me, it's all about getting to market. I need to get to market, you need to get to market, because that's how our businesses are built. Web apps are not simple. Don't let anybody tell you they are. Here are a few things that almost every web application needs. And I'm not talking a GoFries Me, that two endpoint thing. I'm talking, you know, you're going to build the next big thing, hopefully, right? You're going to build a business. You need all of these things. And they don't all exist in the standard library. They're not there. Some of these things are, but not all of them. So now I want you to imagine, just for a second, you're new to, who is new to Go? Oh, wow, okay, P fantastic. So you don't have to imagine. Uh, the rest of you, pretend you're them. And <laughs> we're going to do a little mental exercise. You're new to Go, and you say, I have this new startup idea, uh, and I'm going to crank it out this weekend, because that's what I'm used to doing in some other languages. I can roll a Django app in a weekend, a Rails app, a Symfony app, what have you. So I'm going to roll it in Go, because I hear Go is the next big thing. I'm going to create a ride share, uh, because as we found out yesterday from Steve, you cannot create a ride sharing app that, without using Go. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, so I say, OK, uh, I know I got to do all these things. So let me start looking through the standard library, right? OK, well, router, I found the, the serve mux. Fantastic. So I got a little hello world going. We're, we're rocking. Uh, now I want to do a post request. Ooh, can't really do that. Um, I can put a case statement in there. That, that seems good. Or an if. I'll start with an if, maybe. Uh, and then very quickly, you're like, I need a third party router. <laughs> I'm going to have to pull in Gorilla Mux or HTTP router. And now I'm on Reddit saying, does anybody know of a good router I can use? Because the serve Mux doesn't do it for me. And they respond with just use the standard library. And then somebody yells at the other person, flips their finger off, and it becomes a whole international incident. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so like, oh, okay, fine. Okay, uh, I'll use a, I'll use Gorilla Mox. I'm in third party writing. Now I'm going to get the templating, and you start using the templating library, and you're like, oh, I really need to do a slightly complex if statement in my li Oh, I can't do that either, can I? Oof. What if I want to pass a function into another function, like a nice little helper? Oh, I can't do that. Oh, does anybody know of a good templating package? And all of a sudden, like, you start going down this list, and you realize like, the standard library is good, but it is not going to get you this app out in a weekend. Uh, and I have talked to a lot of brand new developers. And those of you new to Go, who's tried to write a web app using the standard library? Something fairly complex, yeah. Uh, tell me if any of these words <laughs> sound familiar to you. Scary, daunting, unwelcoming? That's the problem we're having. You don't see that, Steve? Steve's going, yes. maybe. Ashley says yes, unwelcoming. This is how I felt. I felt like that when I first came. Well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Who put the peanut gallery in the front row? Uh, I did. I did, not, I did not invite you. <laughs> I specifically said you should go to the other talk. <laughs> Watch mine on video later. Um, the problem I've found is I've talked to a lot of people, and this is the way they felt, uh, and then they're gone. They don't come back. They pull a Kaiser Sose. They just, <sighs> they're gone. Uh, if you don't understand that reference, you are missing a, an amazing movie, absolutely amazing movie, and I've just ruined the ending. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, no point in watching it now. <laughs> But if you ever see it, try to forget this. Um, so I had a lot of people, I've been doing Go now for you know, four, almost five years now. Um, and during that time, I've shown up at a lot of, usually a lot of Ruby meetups telling everybody, use Go! Uh, which, by the way, is really mean. Don't do that. Like, don't go to other people's meetups and tell them that they're doing it wrong. Um, I do that. That's my job. <laughs> if you start doing that, then I'm out of business. Uh, that's no good. But I'd show up, and these people would say, OK, Mark, you love Go. What do you use to build web apps? I said, well, you just use Rails. 
<laughs> and they're like, well, that seems counterintuitive to your statement of Go is amazing. Uh, and it is. Uh, but this was me, honestly, up until this year. Um, and then this happened, Buffalo. Uh, the, the question is whether the logo came first or not. Um, it did. <laughs> no. So, yeah, well, let's talk about Buffalo. Buffalo is an ecosystem for rapid web development. Is it a framework? You might say that. I won't because the framework is the word is taboo in our industry for some reason. Or at least this community, the word framework is like a kiss of death for some reason. I was talking to Steve again about this the other night. Steve wrote uh, Cobra. Who uses Cobra? Right? It's excellent. It's excellent. But you know what it is? It's a framework. <laughs> uh, and Steve said that when he first published Cobra, it was like, why would you need this framework? Just use the standard library. We have the flags package. It's like, well, have you ever tried to build a complicated uh, CLI tool using just the standard library? Kind of hard. <laughs> not going to lie to you. Um, so Buffalo, I like to consider an ecosystem because it's not just about the Buffalo package. Matter of fact, the Buffalo package itself is not overly big, and that's important to remember. What it is is glue around the best parts of Go and the best parts of what the community has had to offer for Go. We take the stance of we'd rather not have to write it ourselves. Um, we want to use the Gorilla Mux router that is battle tested and everybody loves, right? I don't want to write a router. You don't want me to write a router. I can't even say write a router. Oh, I said it that time. <laughs> Maybe I can build a router. Who knows? Um, Buffalo takes all this stuff and just kind of gives it to you. We found the best packages, and I'll talk about some of them in a minute. Um, to do all these things for you so that you can roll an app out in a weekend and those people coming to go for the first time can have that positive experience, that welcoming experience that they had the first time they went to Rails, for example. I remember going from Java to Rails back in 2005. Actually, fun fact, I quit Java in 2003. Uh, I quit development. I rage quit development after writing 100,000 lines of XML. That is not a joke, 100,000 lines of XML. I rage quit and worked in a recording studio for two years. That was, I, and then I was out, and then someone introduced me to Rails, and it was magical. It was like, oh, look how welcoming this is. Like, I can get something out fast, um, and that's what I want. I want to just start coding. <laughs> I don't want to spend time figuring out all these pieces. Right? As a consultant, as a business owner, as a human being, I need to just get to market. I just want to get my stuff out there. I don't want to spend weeks rolling my own custom router or my own templating system or figuring out my, how to run migrations against my database. I want somebody to figure that all out for me. Somehow I became that person, <laughs> which is kind of terrible. This is an important slide uh, and one I really want to drive home when we talk about Buffalo. Buffalo is extracted. It is not imagined. Uh, and that is important. Whenever you're talking to anybody about their new framework, their new library, their new tool, if they imagine it, if they sat down one day and said, you know what would be nice? A package, a library, a framework to do X, Y, and Z, don't use it. <laughs> because it hasn't been used. It hasn't been tested. Someone, yes, who was it? Was it Matt, was it you yesterday who said, like, um, just hold on to it, like, don't release anything publicly, like, play with it, learn it, right? And then you can release it publicly. And that's what happened with Buffalo. Buffalo is years old uh, in a lot of ways. And uh, I spent a year working for a company building an enterprise application for them that needed to be installed on site. Um, they needed... They didn't know what the database was going to be, um, so they needed support for MySQL, Postgres, SQLite. They needed to be able to ship a binary, no other files, no templating files, no JavaScript files, a single binary. They needed to be able to send it to them and say, here, here are a couple commands on that binary, run them. Uh, and that's where Buffalo really took shape. And then in December of last year, I was talking with Brian Kettleson, uh, and I can't remember how the conversation came out, but I said, oh, let me show you something. And I showed him Buffalo, and he's like, oh my God, you absolutely have to open source that. <laughs> you need to publish that. And then he scheduled me on go time, like for two weeks later, he's like, you get two weeks. You get two weeks to bang this thing into shape. Uh, and that's true. And has anybody, did anybody, has anybody heard my go time episode? 
a couple people. You, you, uh, you, more of you should, because it is the highest rated uh, Go Time episode. <laughs> it is. Uh, and it's live from a Dunkin' Donuts, <laughs> which, <laughs> which has a story to it. Uh, but anyway, Buffalo has two goals. And the first one is incredibly selfish. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, it's to let me write applications as fast as I can at Rails. That is 100% the first goal. I consider myself to be the primary user of Buffalo. Actually, I consider Brian Kettleson to be the primary user of Buffalo. He is, I think he pushed more production Buffalo apps than I have. Uh, you write one a week, I think, at this point. Yeah. Um, but for me, that was the original impetus, right? I want to be able to write apps as fast as I can in Rails. The other one's a bit more altruistic. Um, I want to make Go more accessible. And I think the web is the best place to do that. Um, and why do I think that? I think, well, I know there are more web developers in the world than anybody else. Well, not anybody else. There's a lot of Chinese people. Uh, <laughs> probably more of them than, than web developers. I'm almost positive of that. I'll check later. Um, but no, there are more web developers than any other type of developers. That's probably a better qualification. Um, <laughs> and that's a big world. We've got between 500 and 100,000 and a million gophers right now. Right? We can easily double that, triple that, by bringing in people from other communities who are used to writing these web apps. We can pull those Rails folks in. Matter of fact, someone the other day on Twitter said, I was just about to give up on Golang, and then I found Buffalo, and it's almost like a conspiracy to make Railsers gophers. I was like, no, it's, it is a conspiracy. That's absolutely the point. Uh, we want to get more people in Go, um, because I want a bigger community. I want conferences like this to thrive. Uh, and we're seeing this. We're seeing more and more conferences every single year, which is awesome. But we can make this thing go through the roof. Uh, and what do we get with a bigger community apart from more information and more diversity and better libraries and better packages? We get more jobs. <laughs> Who here writes Go full time for their current job? Not enough people, right? Not enough people. And you know why? Because we need more Go developers. If we have more Go developers, companies will take more of a risk on Go. And it's not really a risk, as we know. Go is amazing. <laughs> You're not here to be sold on Go. You're already paid for your ticket. Uh, or you stumbled in off the street, Ernesto. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, uh, companies will be, take more of a chance. And they'll say, OK, look, look at all these developers out there. And they're all doing these amazing things. We should start doing that in-house. So more jobs. Bigger community means more jobs, means less not writing Go. And that's awesome. I am down to one Rails app, uh, one Ruby app I have to maintain, unfortunately. Uh, no, I love, the, I love the app, but I want to write it in Buffalo. But it's three years old, and I can't. Um, but I'm down to that, and that's an awesome feeling, uh, to not have to deal with Ruby anymore. Nothing against Ruby, <laughs> but I really love Go. So really, what better way to grow Go, I think? than through the web. So with that said, enough evangelizing why I think Buffalo is important to the community. Hopefully, you feel the same way. Hopefully, you, you can see that as a community, we can take this project. And it's not my project. We've got a lot of great contributors. Uh, and I want to see more contributors. But we can take this thing, and we can make it big. And we can grow this community in a way that you know, we've only just kind of touched the surface on. So that's the why of Buffalo if you will. Let's talk about the what. It's probably what some of you are here to see. The what of Buffalo. Buffalo is a batteries included framework, and we've heard this phrase before. Um, but when I say batteries included, uh, I actually mean all of the batteries, uh, not just the Go batteries. And that's an important part of what Buffalo does. Here are some of the included batteries, for example. Gorilla Mux for routing, Plush for templating, Pop for database, Webpack and Yarn for our asset pipeline. Deployment, we've got things like Docker uh, and Buffalo Build, which we'll talk about testing. We got Go, we got some Testify in there. Uh, task scripting, if you've ever used like a rake in Ruby before, we've got an amazing system called Grift, which lets you use the phrase, I ran a Grift today. No? OK. <laughs> That's how I name things based on puns. Never mind. OK, internationalization, sessions, the whole nine yards. <laughs> if you don't like the included batteries, that's fine. Just use your own. There's only one included battery that is absolutely required, and that's the Gorilla Mux router. Um, but if you, you know, so that's the only one you absolutely have to use. But if you don't like your own, use the other one. Use, get rid of them. A lot of these have flags, so just turn them off. If you don't want Webpack, turn it off. 
You don't want Docker, turn it off. You don't want plush or templating, you use the API flag and boom, you're just dealing with JSON stuff, right? Uh, there's lots and lots of customization here. We are not forcing you to use anything except for Gorilla Mux. Uh, but with that said, understand that if you change on some of these pieces, some of the built-in generators may not work for you uh, as they kind of have expectations of what you're expecting to do. Um, but for example, and I don't expect you to read this code, uh, you can replace the templating engine by implementing the template engine type. It's just one function, takes three arguments. You can create your own renderers. It's, one func it's a, an interface with two functions, very simple functions, uh, and so on and so forth. But let's talk about development. What's the development time like? For me, Buffalo is all about developer productivity. Uh, that is the number one metric I base Buffalo on. <laughs> How easy can I build my app? How fast can I build my app? I got into an argument with somebody on GitHub the other day because they wanted benchmarks on like the router and stuff. I'm like, it's the Gorilla Mux router. Go look at their benchmarks. And they're like, but we, what are you adding on top? And I'm like, does it matter? You get two millisecond response times. It doesn't matter. It's fast enough for you. Uh, for me, the development speed is the benchmark that matters. Uh, and we'll do this. I'm actually going to build an app and we'll deploy it to Heroku uh, by the end of this talk here. Uh, we offer a ton of commands. Buffalo is not just a package, it is a tool chain. And that's why I say it's an ecosystem. The Buffalo binary has so many subcommands and so many subcommands off those subcommands to do insane things. Now we have plugins where you can write your own subcommands for Buffalo and plug them in. We'll see that with my Heroku one later. Um, but the Buffalo dev command compiles, starts the application for you, watches any assets and rebuilds them if you're using Webpack. Uh, so as you change your style sheets and JavaScript, and by the way, its default configuration is ES6 and SCSS and jQuery and all that stuff is kind of ready out of the box. We do production minification, uglifying, and stuff like that for you. Uh, static assets are served from disks. There's no recompiling of Go file. Like, you know, if you've ever used things like Go bin data before, where you have to keep compiling every time you make a change to something, we don't have to do that. They're all served from disk until later. Uh, if your Go files change, we watch them, we recompile the application and restart it for you. So that by the time you hit save and vim and you tab back over to your browser, your app's already restarted, you can refresh the page and there are your changes. We even show you a web page if there was an error compiling your binary and tell you what the error is. Um, we go out of our way to make the developer experience amazing for you. Deployments, this is another key thing. We want to be able to deploy our apps quickly and fast. Um, one of my favorite ways is Docker. And if you generate a new Buffalo app, for example, you get a file that looks like this. It's a multi-stage Docker file. Um, and that's all you need to compile and deploy your application. Uh, or you can use the Buffalo build command, which is kind of cool too. Again, builds assets for production if you're using Webpack. Bundles your templates, your assets, your migrations, anything else, any other static content you might have into the binary. All there in one command. Auto versions the binary, installs the SHA and the build time into the binary as well, so we can query the binary. Uh, we can run migrations off the binary. We can serve the app off the binary. That's kind of an important one. Uh, it supports all the Go tags, LD flags, environment variables, everything like that. Entire tool chain. It is one binary to rule them all. No? Okay, whatever. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be here either. No, <laughs> Can we just tell the organizers we had a talk and then no? Um, okay, let's do a little demo, shall we? Uh, so for our demo, we're going to bring up someone from uh, EA to demo their really boring game for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> I really hate those Apple demos. They're the worst. They're so bad. Um, oh, my thing's over there. Okay. Am I close to it? There we go. And there's my mouse. Oh, I, I saw something. Computers are hard. There you go. Uh, there we go. Where's the mirroring option? Anybody see it? Ar arrangement. Thank you. Mirror. Just. There we go. Okay. Fabulous. So let's start a new application here. So Brian Kettleson's name just popped up. Bigger? How's that? Okay. So there we go. 
Um, it's the Buffalo New command. All apps start with a Buffalo New. Um, and you can see we've got a ton of flags here to skip yarn, skip webpack, skip pop, Docker, you can do none, multi, standard, database type, Postgres, MySQL, SQLite. Uh, you can skip that entirely. You can do just the API, which makes it just a like JSON API and gets rid of all templating and uh, fun stuff like that. I don't know why you would, but you could. Um, but let's create a new Buffalo app here called Golang UK. That sounds good. Here we go. This is going to go get a few things. Go import, step. Oh, we have a console in Buffalo. So you can do Buffalo console and get in there and you can talk to your models and stuff like that, which is kind of fun. And the console is getting a big rewrite as well. We're not going to keep using Gore. We're gonna, we've got a big rewrite in the works here. Uh, so now I'm going to install a bunch of uh, front end packages here. There we go. I've created my whole application. I've created a ton of files. I've actually done a git init. Um, and if I go into the application here, is it Golang UK? Not Golonk. There we go. I can't type standing up. Why do they make people type standing up? This is what your default Buffalo application looks like. Hard to read in the back, uh, but you shouldn't have sat in the back. Plenty of space up front. <laughs> I don't know why you'd be back there. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got a couple dot files here, but we've got actions. This is where all our handlers are going to go. This is how we're going to handle all of our requests. Our assets, this is where our style sheets, our JavaScripts, our SCSS, our images, whatever we want are going to go in there. Our GRIFs, these are these little tasks we get to run here. Locales for internationalization. Models for our database stuff. Node modules, because it's Node. Um, I don't know what they put. They put stuff in there. Um, don't look, it's scary. <laughs> uh, public folders where all your assets get compiled. Uh, and then templates. That's where all of our templates go. Um, so first thing I like to do, well, the first thing I usually do, well, I don't do because I'm awesome. Um, is configure my database YAML file to talk to my database, um, make sure that it's set up correctly. So if we look at that here, for me, this is 100% set up correctly. Surprise. <laughs> it works fine on my machine. Um, but yeah, you can figure your username, your password, your hosts, uh, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and once you've done that, you can run the nice db create dash all command. There we go. Now I've created my production, development, and test databases. All created for me. I could start my application here. There we go. It started on port 3000. Um, and if I go to port 3000, my, my assets have compiled. There we go. Uh, Woohoo, a Buffalo app. Fantastic. Um, be pretty boring if that was it, though, wouldn't it be? Um, but this is kind of interesting. I love this feature. Uh, this is just the home page, but we can show this on the console, too. Um, I'll actually show it on the console because I think it's cooler there. Buffalo tasks uh, routes. Here we go. Here's a list of all of our routes. Method, get, slash. There are no aliases for this route. Uh, the helper name that you can use in your templates. There's route path. Uh, and this is the handler that's ha actually uh, handling that, which is kind of cool. So I can just very simply look and say, who is handling that particular thing? And it gives me the actual like full path name to it. Um, which you won't, won't see in a lot of other places. Uh, okay, so we've got an app running here, but that's not that interesting. Let's actually do something here. Let's uh, do some database stuff, shall we? Yeah. I love, I love your enthusiasm. You're like, yes, Mark! <laughs> <laughs> Let's create a new uh, resource. And we'll call this widget, and widget will have a name, uh, and it'll have a body, which is of type text. If I run that... Here we go, I've created a whole bunch of code. I've created actions, an entire set of CRUD actions to handle my resource. I've set, created a whole entire set of templates to handle my resource. I have also created models to handle my resource. I have created migrations to handle my resource. Uh, and now I can run Buffalo DB migrate. Here we go, I've created my database, my table in my database. Uh, and we, if we go back here and restart. There we go. It starts up everything here. I go back. Okay, now I have a whole bunch of widgets stuff in my routing table. Uh, if you don't believe me that that actually exists, and we'll look at some of this code in a second here. Here we go. Here's my widgets. And I can create a new widget. 
And if I hit save, ooh, I even get validation errors. Fancy. Um, <laughs> fancy pants. Um, hello, world. Uh, nice to see you. And there we go. I could save it. Voila, a database backed widget. Fantastic. Um, did that in about, what, 10 seconds, not even, um, which is pretty cool. We got also some nice log output here. But let's actually look at some of this code, what actually happened there. Um, most of the stuff that you're interested in is going to be in Actions, your Actions folder. Uh, and here is the Actions app folder, uh, the Actions app. This is where most of your life lives in a Buffalo application. You create a new Buffalo application, give it a few uh, configurations. By default, we have two different types of Buffalo applications, automatic and standard. Never use standard. <laughs> uh, it's a stripped down version of automatic, uh, and I don't know why you would use it, but we have it just because. Uh, we had some middleware, like the session saver, so we automatically save your sessions so you don't have to keep doing it in your code anymore. Um, parameter logging, CSRF middleware, kind of all set up for us. Uh, I like to wrap all my requests in a trans database transaction. You don't have to. Um, internationalization, uh, handler, asset handler, and then finally our widgets resource uh, right down here at the bottom. So all that was generated for us um, by Buffalo, by the generator commands. Uh, but you own this code, and that's important to understand. This isn't like Goa or something like that where you have to keep continually regenerating stuff. Once you gen it, that's it, we're kind of like, here is the base for you to work with, this is your application, not ours, do what you need to. Um, and if we look at the widgets, if I can spell widgets, widgets go, here we go, this is the action, this is the resource that we generated. And you can see here's some nice list information. So we go, we get all the lists, we have pagination set up for you by default, so we can paginate all your widgets. Um, but you go in here and you change this and you do this, you build your business logic. We're just trying to get you started. Uh, we want you to have that beautiful win, remember? We want you to start getting to, biz getting to your business logic as fast as possible and giving you as much information as we can to do that. Um, and you can go through and you can see all the other fun stuff that's happening in there. And we have a widget model somewhere, if I can type. There we go. Here's my widget model that was generated. Um, UUIDs, you can use ints, but I recommend UUIDs. I think they're better for a lot of reasons. Um, we've got auto-manage created and updated ads for you. There's our name, there's our body, some nice string stuff, a collection type. Um, we even try to start adding validations for you based off of what you typed in that command line. Um, because you said that you wanted to, what, a title and a, a name and a body, and you didn't say that they were null types, uh, so we say, okay, well, they obviously have to be present that's where those validation errors came from. Uh, and then you can go down, there's different validations for different action types, like if you've saved it, if you've updated it, that sort of thing. Um, and now let's look at templates new. Here's our new page for our template with this lovely Form 4 helper here for anybody familiar with Rails. Um, this is the plush templating uh, library, by the way. Hands down the most powerful templating system. Brian's going, oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, no other Go templating system is this powerful. Um, and I really, truly, I'm saying that not just because I wrote it. Uh, <laughs> but that, that's part of it. Um, hey, it was named after an awesome song from the 90s. What? STP. No. Uh, uh, so here's our form four for a widget, and it goes to the widgets path, and it's a method type post, and we've got a partial support here. If we look at the form for it, here we go, we got nice things like input tags and text areas and all sorts of stuff. And this handles all of our CSRF, all of our error handling. Um, if we go back to, say, edit a widget, uh, and we inspect the HTML, let's not do that, let's do view source. Is that still a thing? View source, do people still view source? Maybe not, no. Why click on the page? Yeah, see, look, it's, oh, show page source, not view page source. Oh, it's still the same damn inspector. That was lame. Um, there we go. And go away. How do we get rid of this side here? Ah, there we go. And there we go. That's what I was looking for. Let's give you an idea of the generated form. Um, you see it's got IDs and methods and the authenticity token there, which is our CSRF token somewhere. I think it goes off the screen uh, and all that sort of stuff there. 
yeah. So this is all built in. This is all free for you to just go and use um, and do with, uh, as you please. But this isn't enough, right? How, much, how are we doing for time? We've got 10 minutes. Someone, no? 10, thank you. I'm just going to keep doing this until someone responds, because <laughs> this apparently means show me the time. I know sign language. Um, that's not true at all. Let's, uh, let's actually deploy. <laughs> I clearly don't know anything about sign language. Uh, let's deploy this app, and then we'll do some more fun stuff with it, hopefully, if we still have some time here. So I am going to use the Buffalo Heroku plugin. Um, I know. And have you used this yet? No. And if I do Buffalo Heroku setup, here we go. Uh, it's going to start creating a Buffalo app, uh, Heroku app for me, set the Go, can, Go ENV to production, set a session secret for me. Uh, it's creating a database for me, uh, setting up SendGrid for me, because typically when I set up an app, I want all the bells and whistles, Redis and that sort of stuff. I could have skipped some of this stuff, but. Anyway, this is, this is an unofficial plugin. This is a plugin, by the way. But I didn't want to sit here and type all this stuff out while you watched. Uh, there we go. OK, so it's set up uh, Heroku for me. It's building my Docker container um, that was built, that was generated for me in Buffalo. And now it's doing Yarn stuff for all that JavaScript I've added. <laughs> it's linking dependencies, building fresh packages. It's sad that like, the, the asset stuff takes so much longer than the Go stuff. And we're almost done there. There we go. OK, we are making sure we have all of our dependencies. We are building the binary here. Now we're in the Go uh, Buffalo build world here. I'm going to build a statically linked binary with the dash dash static flag. There we go. It's building everything. There are all assets got built. Production, um, great. Now we've moved it into Alpine. We're using multi-stage Docker here. We are pushing to Heroku, uh, hopefully. Pushed. Uh, come on. Come on, Wi-Fi. Here we go. We're running our migrations on Heroku. Uh, remember, this is actually all happening inside an, Alf uh, an Alpine container. It has just my binary in it. It has zero other files. Uh, there we go. I've migrated my database. Here's my database config. It's going to open up my brand new Heroku app here. Ooh, look at that. Right? <laughs> Come on, that's pretty cool. And then I can go to my widgets. There we go, and I can create a new widget, and this is all working uh, just fine. All right? That's an easy, pleasant experience for anybody. <laughs> um, probably not the experience you had trying to write a Go app for the very first time. Uh, I've generated a ton of code, admittedly, but writing, these co writing this code is not that complicated. Um, if we go back really quick to uh, the home handler here, this is a pretty good example of what a Buffalo handler looks like. They're really simple. Um, and whether you agree with the concept of them being simple or not, we can definitely take that offline. Um, Florin and I had a have had long discussions both online and offline about this not being a kind of standard Go uh, type, you know, the standard Go handler. Um, but the reason it's not is because we want trying to make this as easy as possible for everybody. Absolutely as dead simple possible for new people coming in. Uh, and this is as, pos as simple as we can possibly get it. You have a handler, you take a context, you return an error. And we will handle the error for you. We give you ways to handle the error on your own, and you can easily plug in your own custom error handlers, but by default, we've got your back. Uh, and if you don't believe me, take a look at the one you're with. Um, here we go. Oh, that's, oh, this is production, isn't it? Uh, let's look at this route shouldn't exist. Here we go. Um, here's what an error looks like in development mode, for example. So invalid type for UUID. That, not a UUID, I can imagine that. But we can see the whole stack trace here. Um, we can see what is currently in the context of this request. What are we looking at? What are parameters did we get? Were there any form arguments? And what routes do we have? Because maybe this is a 404 page. Um, so again, it's about development. <laughs> we are trying to make your life as 
as good as possible, by giving you as much information as we possibly can as to what went wrong and why uh, it went wrong. And yeah, and then we've got, we've only got five minutes left. So you know, I'm actually gonna stop it here and take just five minutes worth of questions. Um, there's so much more I can show you, but uh, I highly encourage you to go, bo go to gobuffalo.io. Uh, there's tons of great docs. If you're looking for a good PR, docs are always a great first PR. Um, the blog, blog.gobuffalo.io. I've got insane amounts of video <laughs> and blogging content. I actually have a, an entire 20 minute video I need to post about um, writing custom helpers in Go that I posted in the Slack channel. We have our own Slack channel, the Buffalo Slack channel. I posted in there the other day, but it still needs to go up on the blog. Um, so check that out, go to the Slack channel, tweet me. I've got stickers, by the way, awesome Ashley McNamara Buffalo stickers, and magnets. Ooh, no one else is giving you magnets, people. Revel isn't giving you magnets, Bego's not giving you magnets, Iris definitely ain't giving you magnets. Uh, they'll take your magnets. <laughs> <laughs> I really shouldn't have said that, but uh, sorry. No, I didn't mean to say they. He he will take your magnets. <laughs> no, too too far. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. Uh, okay. So we got time for just like a couple questions. Are there any questions? Right here in the front, because I can hear you. Uh, it might be an unpopular question. It is. But um, is there a MongoDB? Plugin? Is there a MongoDB plugin? <laughs> that, that is an excellent question. Um, Pop is, does not support MongoDB currently. Um, I would love it if it could. I don't know if it can or not. Uh, however, you can skip Pop and bring Mongo to the table, but what you don't get is the generators uh, that we have won't work for you. However, we have plugins, as we saw um, with the Heroku one. If I do, you know, Buffalo dash dash help, um, I should have a couple plugins here. Right, plugin tools for deploying helpers. Uh, I don't have any other plugins uh, right now. Um, so you could absolutely write, you could be the person who owns the Buffalo Mongo plugin that supports all this stuff, has nice generators and everything. Hmm? Awesome? It would be awesome, because I'm not doing it. Other questions? <laughs> right there. Not so much a question, but uh, could you just show us the console working? Can I just show you? Sure. Yeah. Uh, the console is getting a big uh, refresh. We're currently using a library called Gore, um, but what do we have? We have widgets, right? So I can say, you know, models widget, um, and then models uh, db first w. There we go, and if I print off the widget, there we go. And then obviously I could, act, I could update the widget, I could do whatever I want with the widget. Um, but yeah, we've got a, a new console in the works that's gonna blow this away. Um, and it's gonna also be standalone too, so you could use it in your own projects, not just Buffalo projects. But um, yeah, Gore, you can currently do that, but we can't control it programmatically, and that's our big downside with it. Um, but yeah, this is really cool. <laughs> uh, that's one of my favorite parts, and so many people don't even realize it's there. Yeah, cool. Uh, I think we got one more question. Time for one more. Right over there. Wait for the mic. Thank you, Mark. N nice talk. Thank you. So, how can we co collaborate? What is the, a feature that you need to implement or something that you wish you have but you don't have time to, to do it? Ooh, what's the, fisher, the feature um, I wish we had but I don't have time to do? Oh God, I don't know, there's a lot. Uh, we're not there yet, we're not at 1.0 and that's important to know. Um, I don't have a good answer for you honestly because uh, there's a lot of things I would like to see. Um, more database support, MySQL, Oracle, any of those things are always awesome. Um, more plugins for deploying to th tools like GAE or other, you know, Azure, whatever. Like, I'd love to see plugins for that stuff. Um, but just on the 1.0 front, we're at 0.9.3, came out this week. We're not going to 1.0 anytime soon. Uh, and that's not because we're afraid, but because we want to have the same compatibility promise that Go has. Um, so once we hit 1.0, we are going to stay with that implementation forever. Uh, well, not forever, till 
But we don't want to make 2.0 like three weeks later, <laughs> right? We want you to have stable applications. Uh, with that said, Buffalo, the 090 range has been incredibly stable. Uh, between upgrades, apps, almost nothing has changed that you've needed to tweak. Um, so right now, if you go from 08 to 09, for example, there are some changes there, but they weren't even that steep, actually. Um, so we're, we're definitely leveling off. Um, yeah. Cool. I think that's all I have time for. Thank you very much. Come find me for stickers and magnets. Thank you.